Hello, I'm Mark Taylor from the MQ Development Lab, and I'm here to talk to you about the newly announced MQ version 9. Since its creation, MQ has always been about providing the connectivity needed to allow applications to communicate. The messages carried by MQ integrate those applications across an organisation or between organisations. MQ has always been designed to meet enterprise requirements of performance, reliability, availability and security, and to fit in with various administration needs. It continues to evolve to match evolution of those requirements, supporting new environments such as cloud configurations or the simplicity of an appliance. Simplifying developer and administrator access to messaging through MQ is key to the latest steps with the product. MQ version 9 is the latest release of this product. It was announced in April for availability in June 2016. One of the first things to talk about is the introduction of a new way of delivering MQ function. There are competing pressures from customers wanting new function as soon as possible and from customers wanting no changes to their stable and tested platforms. In version 8 we try to provide a balance between those two requirements, shipping some new function in the service stream while being careful not to radically rework known tested base code. During this process we've learned a lot more about customer requirements and our own development processes and have decided that version 9 will have two delivery models with the choice between them being up to you. The long-term support stream will have only fixes available, fix packs on distributed platforms, PTFs on ZOS, with no new function added during its lifetime. As has been standard practice, it will get support for a minimum of five years, with the option for service extensions beyond that. At some point, a new release would be expected, which includes new function along with existing fixes. The rapid delivery stream sits alongside the long-term stream with new functions being delivered in modification levels 901, 902 and so on. These mod levels will be only supported for a relatively short time and you'll have to move from mod level to mod level in order to receive fixes which will only be produced based on the latest modification level. Once a new long-term release is made available the cycle begins again with a new set of mod levels. Moving on to the product features, I'm actually going to start with version 8. That was released in 2014 and had a wide range of enhancements. If you don't know the details of that release, you might want to look at the version 8 Red Book that drilled down into many of them. Most of the fix packs released to date on version 8 have included some new function. Here's a list of many of them, and details are available elsewhere on those new features. As well as new function, there's also been support for new environments, such as Docker and Chef and the red paper showing how MQ fits into the as-a-service world with fully worked examples of using an automation tool to manage MQ software and configuration. The version 9 scope could be considered another set of function much like we've released in the fix packs, but it provides a clean baseline for future development and includes all of the features released after version 8 originally shipped. As we go through these charts, you'll also see references to RFEs that were raised by customers and which have been satisfied by this release. As I said at the beginning, one of the elements of our vision for MQ is to continue to simplify configuration and deployment. And being able to centrally manage client tables is one piece of that. The MQ clients can now all refer to a central repository for the CCDT without needing to have the file pushed out to a local file system. Instead, the location of the CCDT can be defined as an FTP or HTTP server. This has been possible with the Java and .NET clients, but has now been extended to the C client interface. Security is another critical piece of what MQ provides. The advanced message security feature protects messages even while those messages are at rest in a queue, stopping unauthorized people from reading the data in those messages. With version 9, we've added a new option for AMS protection, which has significant performance improvements over the existing policies. Messages at rest are still encrypted and can only be decrypted by the intended recipient, but removing the PKI-based signature on the message removes the most expensive piece of the processing. We can see from the measurements made by our performance team that the throughput of messages protected by the new confidentiality option is very close to the throughput of unprotected messages and the CPU cost is also much closer than when the privacy policy is used. Another enhancement to AMS is support for Java applications running 
in non-IBM Java runtimes. By redesigning the interceptor layer to use an alternative crypto library, we're no longer dependent on the packages included with the JRE shipped with MQ. And the new crypto package that we are using is bundled inside the MQ Java JMS classes, so it doesn't need to be separately installed in whichever JRE you're using. Application Activity Trace is a way on distributed platforms of getting information about the MQ API calls made by an application. That might be used for problem determination, for audit trails, for checking application design, or a range of other reasons. The need to support multiple use cases for this data means that it is convenient to have it published to a topic instead of just put to a single queue. We also wanted to make the configuration of which programs to track much simpler than editing an any file. So now you can subscribe to a topic and trace of the selected processes will be delivered to your personal destination queue. You can choose to track applications by name, by server con channel name, based on the topic chosen. We can see an example here, formatted by the sample program AMQS Act, which is looking from activity from AMQS Put. Another PubSub based piece of monitoring collects key information about not just the queue manager, but also the system on which the queue manager is running. So we can now report on disk and CPU status, as well as the queue manager itself. A sample program, MQS RUA, shows how to access re these reports. This example shows the recent CPU usage for the machine where the queue manager is running. One of my favourite features in version 9 is command recall and editing for run MQSC on Unix systems. When you do a lot of work inside run MQSC, but also make a lot of typing and spelling errors, this will save a lot of time. Going beyond what you can do on Windows, there's also some syntax assistance to help complete keywords. In this example, I've started to type a command. When I hit tab, it tells me a possible completion of that command. Hitting tab again takes me to a further possible completion. Hitting enter will select what I want, and then I can continue typing further. We've added support for more Unicode character processing. One example of where this is useful is for global companies that want to use UTF-16 for all their customer data. A single code page can accommodate customer names regardless of where they come from. On ZOS, we've extended the statistics generated by the queue manager to include data about page set usage. This can help with activities such as capacity planning or problem resolution. Providing this through SMF makes it easier to automate processing and therefore get early warnings of possible problems. One of the features aimed at deployment simplicity in version 9 is specifically for ZOS administrators. We've provided samples and documentation to integrate MQ into a ZOSMF environment, making it easy to drive creation of resources from the ZOSMF browser or REST interfaces. Finally, in this list of features, we come to important improvements made to managed file transfer to make it easier to see what's going on when you're trying to integrate it into an existing FTP network. And that's what's in version 9. We'll be back later to discuss the first of the modification level rapid release stream for version 9 when it's ready. And there will be blog posts and other material going into more depth of some of the features I've talked about today. But for now, that's all, and thanks for watching.